Hi, today's video is a shout out to Andrew Latenda because we were having a conversation about this company. Now, I like getting ideas from other investors, but I would never blindly invest in something someone just told me about. I have to do a big dig into the company myself. Now, I'm not familiar with Sprouts Farmers Markets, but I like to cook with good vegetables, so this is a business that did pique my interest. I have been to Whole Foods a few times, so I do understand the popularity of healthy shopping. Sprouts seems like a cheaper Whole Foods. And if you're new to my channel, well, welcome. My videos are about investments that anyone in the world can make. And what I'm trying to do is help other investors understand the basics of investing, especially in the stock market. There is just so much noise out there that many people invest into something because of something they read online or heard people talking about at work. Now, how many times have you been given a hot tip before? It's exactly why I'm making this video today as a friend has shared an idea with me and I now need to formulate my own opinion. Now I'm 32 years old. I have about $600,000 in the stock market right now and I'm aiming to keep that growing at around about 20% per year. Now, I'm not perfect at this. Not every investment that I make is gonna be a home run, but I'm always learning and it's the best way to learn I think is to teach. So here I am showing you how I analyze a company. Okay, now let's get into Sprouts Farmers Markets. Sprouts Farmers Markets are a natural and organic grocery store in the Southern states of the USA. It started in 2002 and has grown to about 350 stores today. Now they IPO'd back in 2013 and the valuation of the company was just ridiculous. As you can see, this is the PE ratio and it was well over 60 and has been falling ever since. So back in 2013, there was just a lot of hype around this company. They are essentially competing against other grocery stores and in particular Whole Foods. Now, Whole Foods, if you're not familiar, is a very popular store and is far more expensive than Sprouts. Now, according to the 2020 Organic Industry Survey released by the Organic Trade Association, US organic food sales hit $50 billion, up 4.6% from the previous year. It outpaced the general market growth rate of around 2% for total food sales. Now, the general trend in the industry is that organic and natural foods are growing at around twice the rate of normal grocery. Now, there is no reason this trend will not continue as more and more people prefer to eat healthier. And just anecdotally, I think this trend makes sense as I like to cook and I like to use fresh vegetables myself, so I would be the target market, I guess. Sprouts are currently in 22 states in America with plans to grow around 30 new stores per year. Being in the fresh and organic segment, they will struggle to move into certain states where farming land is minimal or covered in snow for large periods of the year. What I mean is, of course, Alaska probably won't ever see a sprouts because the farmland is covered in snow and sprouts need to be near farming areas. But 30 stores per year is the goal for the company, so that is something we can use to calculate their potential. Now, it's not just growth from opening new stores that will drive company growth in the future. Same store sales growth has done very well in 2020. Now, Sprouts are considered an essential business, so they've stayed open throughout this year and have benefited greatly from this. Same store sales are up 4.2%. Earnings per share is 51 cents to compare to the 22 cents of 2019. So, fantastic results, and you would think the share price would be flying along with these big improvements to the business. All right, so I think this is important. Let's talk about the potential downside issues. So number one, the management team has been changing a lot over the past two years. So a little instability here. I like when the CEO and the management team have a lot of ownership in the company, but for Sprouts, this isn't the case. Number two, well, margins in grocery, all grocery are low. This is the industry they are in, I guess. The margins are tight and competition for grocery is fierce. Walmart, Kroger, Whole Foods, these are big time competitors. Sure, Sprouts separates themselves has, and has proven to work with their 356 stores, but other companies can adapt as well, I guess. I'll look at gross margins in their finances section to just see how they are going compared to those other companies. And number three, well, it's the rise of online grocery shopping. So this is an interesting issue, of course. The future is going to be having groceries delivered to you, but fresh produce is still something way behind the other online shopping markets. I hate when I order, say, apples online and a few of them are bad and I have to throw them away. I would have picked far better apples if I just was there myself. So online grocery is about 3% of the grocery market and that will slowly increase. I just think it is a long way away from being the dominant grocery shopping method. Okay, now from the bull thesis point of view. Firstly, 
There are 30 stores a year for five years and we'll see in 2025 store numbers at about 500. So about a 33% improvement to their earnings. Number two, get that PE ratio closer to the industry average of 15. Currently it's at nine. This is just simple mean reversion. Companies historically move towards the average and a niche grocery store with solid growth rates should easily demand the, at least the average PE ratio. And number three, well, continuing to do share buybacks by another 10% by 2025. Since 2015, Sprouts have reduced their shares outstanding from 156 million to 118 million, which is about 25% less. Look, let's be conservative and say just another 10% reduction over the next five years to about say 105 million shares outstanding in 2025. Share buybacks is just something I really like to see. Since shares of a company are a part ownership in the company, well, our ownership percentage gets bigger and bigger because the company is taking shares off the market. So this is great news for long-term investing and something that's just a big positive. So let's use these points now to estimate a fair price in 2025. I'm going to assume margins stay the same and business conditions are normal. Okay, so the current earnings per share for the trailing 12 months is $2.12. Now let's normalize that and call it $1.80 because this year has been a bit of an exception. Okay, so they're gonna increase their stores. So they got the earnings per share at $1.80. Let's multiply that by 33%, which gives us $2.40 earnings per share in 2020. Okay, now let's get that $2.40 earnings per share number and multiply it by 1.11 which is gonna factor in the 10% reduction in shares outstanding. So now we've got $2.66 earnings per share in the year 2025. Now, with this $2.66, let's multiply it by a fair PE of 15. So that's gonna give us $40. So in 2025, the share price is expected to be $40 by these calculations. Now I wanna run this through my intrinsic value calculator to see if that is correct, but I thought it would be interesting to show a really logical way to predict the future share price. With any business, to check the financial health of the company, we want to look at these three areas. Can they handle their debt? Are they growing? And are they a well-managed company? Now, look, don't worry about the terminology I use here. Just sit back, relax, and just try to follow along. Look, it's part art, part science, and you kind of need to just get some experience in this. It is really important to look at the company's debt because the businesses just can't go bankrupt if they don't have debt. Look, debt is the reason companies get into trouble. So, to see if the business can handle its debt, I go through the debt to equity ratio and the current ratios of the business. So Sprout's debt to equity ratio is at 0.9 and that's well above the 0.7 that I normally like to see. So I had to go and see what the debt was and this is a bit of a trick. This is the balance sheet and the debt actually is capital leases of about $1 billion. This is the major, the major debt here. Okay, so essentially this is just the rent that Sprouts needs to pay in the long term for their locations. I'm actually wanting to see their long-term debt, which is far less at about 275 million. So although the debt to equity ratio looks bad at first, a little digging and it's actually totally okay. And it's actually normal for the industry as well. So the current ratio will be a better indicator. And the current ratio is actually very weak at 0.9. I wanna see this normally above a 1.5. It means they are right on the edge of manageable debt. Look, I prefer to see this safer. In the finances, to check for growth, I look at the book value per share, the earnings per share, the operating cash, and the gross margins. Sure, 2020 is going to be a bit of an exceptional year, so I do want to think about that when I'm looking at these charts. This is the book value per share and recent growth here from Sprouts. That is lockdown related, I think, but look, growth is growth. This is the earnings per share and good solid earnings per share growth here from Sprouts. This is the cash generated from operating activities and solid growth here from Sprouts. Okay, now this is gross margins. This is something I really wanted to see. Now, gross margins is something I have started focusing more on lately. A company that can grow their gross margins is doing a lot of things right. And Sprouts have improved their gross margins in the most recent quarter, nearly up to 37%, which is actually a nice jump up from 2019, which was about 33%. Now for reference, Kroger's gross margins are only 22% and Costco is only 13%. So above 30% is actually very good compared to the industry, but it's not great from an entire economy point of view. I mean, Electronic Arts or Activision Blizzard, well, they're at about 75%. But overall, good growth metrics here, definitely a tick. Now we can't just go and meet the management team and sit in on their meetings, but there are some telltale signs in the financials that tell us that the management are making some good decisions. So I'm gonna check for return on equity, free cash flow and their cash on hand. Now I wanna see the return on equity above a 15 and it is very solid at about 25. 
I'm very happy to see this. Okay, this is their cash in the bank and it's, as you can see, it's all over the place. Plus, it's actually quite low. Great companies build up cash consistently and are prepared for unknown problems in the future. I don't think Sprouts are prepared if something dramatic was to happen. This is free cash flow and look, great free cash flow growth here. It's a very good sign. So my opinion about Sprouts is that they are doing most things very well in the financials, but the current debt obligations and a lack of a cash pile in their bank tells me that the risks are greater here than I normally like to see in an investment. It doesn't mean it is bad. I just want to see a bigger than normal margin of safety. To get a copy of the calculator that will help you find intrinsic value, I have a link in the description and it's free if you want it. When I say intrinsic value, what I'm talking about is based on the growth rate of the company and how much money the company is making. Intrinsic value is the correct today share price. It's not perfect because we make assumptions of the growth rates, but it helps us just get this ballpark figure. Now the stock market of course often overvalues or undervalues a company. So this is just one good approach to working out its fair value. Now I use these metrics to find intrinsic value for Sprouts. The growth rates of 10% and 8%, I've just pulled that from Yahoo Finance and Zacks and I've just averaged them together. The discount rate I've used 8.5%, multiple of 15, which we wanna see for the industry average. Then I got the 250 is the free cash flow, which I've just pulled from uh, Zacks as well. And the 118 is the uh, million shares outstanding. So the calculator has done this magic here and it tells us the current intrinsic value is $50. Now that's with no margin of safety. I think I want a pretty big margin of safety. So I think a solid buy price, normally I would take 50% of this, so it'd be $25, but let's take it a little bit further and say $20. Now this is just my estimations. Please play around with different growth rates. If you think things will be better than what I think and what the analysts are thinking, then try higher growth rates. Just don't forget, some margin of safety is so important. No one is gonna be able to predict this exactly because you're trying to predict the future. So you need some breathing room for errors. Now the current share price in November is about $20 for Sprouts. So I do think Sprouts is actually really solid buying with some downside built into the price. Upside potential isn't huge though, so I might want even more margin of safety. So do I want to invest in Sprouts right now? Okay, now this company isn't for everyone. I don't like that the debt is on the riskier side and they don't have big cash reserves. What could happen is something might go wrong with their supply chain and they need to temporarily close down some stores. Let's say a massive hurricane affected the business, which is definitely a possibility. Look, I grew up on a farm and I know how fickle the weather can be. And this business is tied to the weather. Now, if something dramatic like this happened, they might be forced to issue more shares or get more debt to get through this period. Look, this would seriously affect the value of the business in a negative way. And I think if they had a lot more cash in the bank, I would just feel so much more comfortable. But I have decided that there is a price where I would be willing to take the risk. And that is, I think about $15. We saw this price earlier in the year. And if something dramatic was to happen and then the share price got to $15, then I definitely think the risk is worth taking. So I would be a buyer at this price. With normal business conditions, I could easily get 100, 200% return on my investment within five years. Okay, so my calculator says it is a buy. And here are my reasons why I think Sprouts could be a good investment. They're in a stable growing industry. The aim is 30 new stores per year as a growth rate. Sprouts have been buying back shares and a good return on equity and solid growth metrics. So even though I said denied, I am going to add Sprouts to my watch list. Look, a big thanks to staying to the end of this video. Let me know what you think of Sprouts. I'm really interested to hear your opinions. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and I will see you next time.